Hello guys, this is Vivek and this is the 16th tutorial of this Linux tutorial series. So till now we have seen many different Linux commands and their basics and their usages that will help in Linux administration. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about user and group management. So a user is required so that a system can authenticate a use or someone or authorize or define the rules what a user is capable of doing, what all uh, roles are assigned to it. Now every process in the Linux is initiated by a user and every process in a system is run as a user. Okay, now every file and directory will have an owner associated with it. <coughs> Access to the files and directory are restricted by a username. Now there are two things. One is user ID and a username. Alright. So so user ID is something which is identified by a Linux kernel. It is to be used by the Linux kernel. But for user friendly name, a username is created that is human friendly name. So when you type ls minus l that is long list you get who is the, the owner of this file and what group it is associated to it. now for this username is also student owner and group name is also student so now every user is assigned to user id which is unique to that particular user now let's reiterate username is for user reference user id is for kernel reference now there are two kinds of user. One can be admin users, another can be non-admin users. Admin user is uh, what we call root. It's it's assigned a UID of zero. Now non-admin users can be of two types. One is system users and another is normal users. So system users are allocated, allocated user ID of one up till 999, while normal users are allocated user ID of 1000 up to 60,000. So even in system users, if the user ID is 1 to 999, 1 to 200 is static. So they, they are predefined user sets, which are uh, names which have a pre-assigned user ID along with it. Now 201 to 999 user ID is dynamic in nature and they are dynamically assigned. Now system user is to be used only to authenticate a machine now this is this is very important thing so it's it's system user will you and me won't be required to use system users but suppose you are installing a web server that is apache so apache is a system generated user now there is an important file in the linux machine which has all the users detail that is slash etc slash password now well, let's type that name slash etc slash passwd what all these things are ever wondered here we have student now there are there are many fields in every line and each field is separated by a comma so we'll see what all these fields are so first one is a username so student is a username now password is not present in this file anymore it's just it says that okay password is present for this particular username so it has username password uid gid geckos home directory and login shell we'll see each one one by one so this is user id this says okay password is present for this id now this is the uid we saw that uh, it's assigned from 1000 to 60,000. 60, so this is the very first ID it has taken, 1000. Now, this is GID, group ID. Again, it is 1000. All right. Now, this is Kikos. So you let, let's talk about each of these in detail. So f first one was self-explanatory. It's a username. Second was this is it, it specified that the password added for the user. All right. And it's stored in a different file that is slash etc slash shadow. So I'll do a cat on slash etc slash shadow file. <coughs> oh, so we'll type sudo. 
it's not allowing so uh, pseudo is one thing which we will be talking about in later point of time but right now let's see its usage cat and slash etc slash shadow now this is the username and this is the encrypted password so even you have the access you can't see the password in plain text form. so this is how it stores the password so we were at username password third one was user id second is group id fifth is because it's an optional field basically it says it's a uh, it's like for adding full name to the user or giving a comment section about the user all right now this is the home directory of the user so if you when you log into a shell it takes you to the home directory that is slash home slash student so this is assigned here if you want to assign you can change it here now the last field field is shell it defines what shell will be used by the user so this is how we decrypt this slash etc slash psswd file now we will see how we can create a user so we already have a user called student let's add a, another user called student one so we can type a command user add student one okay it's not allowing me so let, let's elevate our privilege first okay sudo and then you'll type user add student one all right now what happened did it create a, a user let's see if you go to slash etc password aha uh -huh, it created another line another entry is there it's a username yes password is present user id gid because you have not entered anything it's home directory and we have not assigned any shell to it so it will take the default shell all right now how to assign we have created a user called student1 but how to assign password to it so we'll type passwd student1 uh huh. Okay, we don't happen. So we'll type sudo p a s s w d student one. All right. It's asking for new password. We'll type p a s s w o r d p a s s w o r d. Cool. So let's switch to student one. It's asking for password. Now we are student one. Let's exit. Or you can type who am I okay I'm student one now let's exit from this shell we are back to student now one thing you might have noticed in slash etc slash pssWD <clears throat> that it incremented the value by default by one it was 1000 1001 so as soon as as later point of time you will be adding more number of users it will keep incrementing the value so the default shell here is slash bin bash <clears throat> now what if we want to assign a user id with a uh, custom number so we'll type user add or pseudo user add and we'll assign a user id call suppose 1005 all right and we'll give student 2 okay now let's cat on slash etc slash pass wd now we created a student 2 id password is assigned we just added the uid as 1005 group was also added 1005 and this is the home directory and it's taking the default shell now what if we want to change the uh, uh, change the group id or maybe we want to add student one to 1005 how we can do that so we can type 
that we have to modify let's let's not go to that point now let's take a step back now what if we want to assign uh, create a username with uh, some student three and assign a group id so how we can do that we'll create sudo user add and then we'll type small g and then 1009 all right and we'll type student nine okay it says it does not exist why because we can only add to existing numbers okay now let's get on password file we create student nine but group id is 1000 that is students group id it has taken is it making sense if not just rewind the video for a few minutes and then view again it might uh, add more clarity if you are a little confused so it's pretty simple user add minus u then uid you can assign user add minus small g group id you can assign if you want to add um, a user to existing group name you can type user add or sudo user add minus capital G and group name here would be suppose let's take the example of student one student one okay and which user ID will take a student two now okay it says user add student already exist okay uh, we'll take this further now let's try to add a user with a predefined or a different login shell how we can do that so we saw we saw that by default it takes a default login a default shell i will try to add another user called sudo user add and we'll type smallest and slash dev slash null cool what's the user i'll type dump okay we'll do a cat on etc password created a user called dump uid gid and you see the shell assigned is slash dev slash null all right so this was about user add in next tutorial we'll learn more about modifying an existing user using user mod command i hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new do come back and watch the next tutorial thanks for watching